Um, Jorge Soto's path-breaking work to civic engagement has taken several forms. He developed CityVox, a platform used in more than 15 countries that enables governments to receive and analyze citizen reports and turn them into actionable information. And then, as Deputy General Director of Civic Innovation at the President's Office in Mexico, Jorge spurred civic participation and innovation, including by spearheading a really unprecedented move to open Mexican government agencies and their data to the public. Please join me in welcoming Jorge Soto. Thank you very much. Is it working? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, my name is Jorge. I'm from Mexico. And I'm going to tell you uh, a few Mexican stories. And like all Mexican stories, this one starts with luchadores. Uh, I was back in college, back in 2009. And I was a studying electronics engineer. And I was uh, very concerned about my country and about the, all the elections that we previously had. And we were about to have a midterm election at the time. So the country was very divided in violence also and politics. So I decided, what can I do about it? I'm just an engineer. Uh, so we created this platform called Cuidamos el Voto, translated to Let's Protect the Vote. And we open it up for citizens to tweet, send SMS, or go online and tell us uh, any problem that they found during the elections. We receive a video, for example, uh, of a priest saying that we, they should vote for a specific party because if not, it's a sin. Or we receive also an, a picture and a, and a tip about a candidate that stopped another candidate in a polling station. And we actually send that information to the, to the media, and we, were, we received that information first. It was back in 2009 when Twitter wasn't such a big deal as it is now. At the moment, we receive around 30,000 different reports all over the country. It was a huge success. And I remember going uh, on the road from Mexico City to the city of Veracruz and see a, a big uh, advertisement with, with our logo saying, Cuidamos el Voto. And we didn't pay for that. People, citizens paid for it. And they put it our, 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 web, our website over there. When we came with the, to the government institutions with our 30,000 different reports, uh, very well curated, with pictures, with, with uh, location, they told us that they couldn't do anything about it, that uh, they don't, there's not a process that they can receive citizen reports in, uh, in a digital format. Um, that this is the, then we started making some research and we figured out that this is the way that they were look, or they are still doing uh, analytics, real-time analytics, or the way that they are managing information, or the way they are mapping the information. So we, just, we started working with several government agencies and we created a tool where they can uh, store, capture, uh, analyze, and measure different uh, citizen reports and then act upon those reports. Uh, this platform also provides, a, it, it also provides them a, a tool for the, so they can visualize the information with all the social demographic variables. And it has been implemented in several uh, places. But one in particular uh, that, I, that, I, that I like to talk about, it, it's uh, in, in the city where I used to live in Monterrey, uh, in the north of Mexico, where we, we, we built the platform on top of a, of a community that already existed on Twitter. So people, all the security situations that happened, the gunfights, or the burning of, of trucks, which was a daily thing back in 2010 or 29, uh, 2009, uh, they started tweeting that information so people could alert. So it was very common for us when we wanted to go to the movies. First, the first thing we, we, do, we did was go on Twitter, figure, follow the, the specific hashtag, which is MTYFollow, and then figure out if, whether we can transit through the, steer, through the, tree, the streets of Monterrey. So we decided to build a, uh, the platform on top of that conversation that is a completely a, a network conversation and horizontal and connect it to institutions so they can act upon those reports and they can follow up. Uh, and also we created an NGO where, they, where the citizens can receive psychological legal advice. Uh, one specific example that I, that, that I love is this person, uh, she tweeted that their, she, she tweeted at the platform that the, the, her car has been stolen. She tweeted the, the color, the, the brand, and the plates. And people started retweeting and, and, and replying, I've seen your car going through here, I've seen your car going through here. And it took us 11 minutes to find the car. Uh, when they found the car, eventually we, we, uh, we called the police and they, they, they were able to recover the car. Uh, then a few months after that, uh, we, the, it was leaked a contract in the Congress of Mexico that the, 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 the deputies of Mexico, the Congress, they, uh, the Federal Congress, 
they were spending $10 million for the official iPhone app of the Congress. So I don't know who they hired, uh, but it was very expensive, the, that engineer. So uh, instead of just angry tweeting, what we decided to do was, uh, well, we angry tweeted a, a, a little bit at the beginning, but then we decided to launch a challenge. And to launch this challenge to all the civic hacker community and tell them, can you create the same app that the government wants for $1,000 and an iPhone app and an iPad? And, and we gave them only seven days to do that. We, we received around 180 different participants. Of those, five uh, fulfilled the project uh, with all the requirements that were needed. And then I was in Colombia doing a project when I received a call and it was the president of the Congress. And, and he told me, hey, what are you doing? And I was very scared at the beginning. But then he said, why don't you come to the Congress and let these guys that finish the, the, the apps to present uh, uh, to, to the entire Congress their work. And then we select the best, the best app and we, uh, and we implement that, that app. So we came, we went to the Congress, they canceled the contract and they are using this app now. And this guy who is the, the chair of the Congress at the time. He, I remember that I was sitting next to him, that I, I took that picture and he said, he, he said, you know, after seeing what these guys did in just seven days with $1,000, I think $10 million was a little bit more exp uh, too expensive. Um, <laughs> so then they invited me to join the government, uh, the president's office as the head of civic innovation. Um, I, wasn't, I never thought that I would be working for the government. I was there for a year. And it was a very fun experience. Uh, one, one day after I, was, uh, I, I, I took office, for the first time in Mexican history, two hurricanes hit Mexico in both coasts at the same time. Uh, so my, my boss told me, what can you do about it? And I was there just one day uh, in the office and I, I, I knew nothing about disaster response. So the first thing that we did, we created this digital brigade where we showed the trajectory of the hurricanes in real time so people could see that. And also people, and we said uh, all the needs that we have in technology speaking, all, uh, an app for a person, to, or a person finder or to report the damage. Uh, and people started uh, creating this community and, and helping us out creating the apps. Then we also make very transparent all the uh, reconstruction efforts, all the, all the budget that is, that is being uh, uh, spent on how to rebuild the cities. But we also, understood, uh, we also uh, saw how difficult it was to share information with two different agencies. Everything was on paper. The, the information was, um, it, it come from the municipal level, but when it, when it reaches the federal level, most of it is lost, and so we have no idea. So we understood, I, I understood that we're giving away money to rebuild the cities, but we don't know uh, the real damage, or we don't know where the money, how the money is spent uh, officially. Another very interesting thing was uh, we started working with the private sector. So we, we approached uh, Telefonica Movistar, which is a mobile operator in Mexico, and we asked them, can, we, can you share anonymized data uh, of, your, of, the, uh, of the antenna usage uh, in the regions of the hurricane? First, our, uh, our hypothesis was, if we can figure out how people are evacuating the city, we can uh, we give priorities of which roads we should open first, and also uh, which cities we should prepare for, to receive the refugees. So our first, uh, uh, we, we were able to, to validate that people were using more the cell phone because as you can see, there's a spike on Christmas and there's a spike also during the floods. And then this is a, a random period of how people move around, the, uh, around the, the region of where the hurricane hit on a random period. And this is during the hurricane. So we see that people are actually uh, evacuating the cities. And that way, uh, red means uh, they are leaving and yellow it means they are arriving. So we, we, we knew where, they, where they, they were moving from. And we also knew how many kilometers they were moving. So around 70% were moving around 10 kilometers from their hometown, from their house. We already analyzed the, where they connect at night. We assume that's, a, the, where, that's where they are sleeping. And also how long it takes them to come back. Around 70% around came back in a week. So we, we were, we were more, much more prepared and we were able to uh, uh, prepare also the cities that were receiving, uh, receiving the refugees. Uh, we understood at this moment, as I told you, the, the value of data and that we didn't have any data. So we, we decided to create, uh, Mexico didn't have an open data uh, policy at the time. So we did the, the, the open data policy and it was the first also policy that was crowdsourced. So we put it over there in a very human language, a language that anybody could understand in a very brief resume, but also you can look at the entire policy. And people could vote in favor or against of any specific paragraph and also edit directly the paragraph. We received around uh, a thousand different comments for a topic that is a little bit boring. And 300 actual editions 
to the policy. The policy was published uh, a few months ago. And, but it's not just open data because we can do open data. It's, it's actually trying to focus on, on, on telling the stories with data or, or actually making better decision making with, with it. So for example, one is we're trying to understand uh, all, the, all the variables that are around the poverty regions in Mexico or, or people that are behind, well, well behind in the, in, the, in the development progress and understand all the variables so, so they can, we can better uh, impact the, the social policies on there. Or for example, the, the only million, the millennium development goal that Mexico will not fulfill is uh, childbirth mortality and, and more mortality. So we, this way we could identify where these people are, uh, these mothers are dying, these children are dying, and also what is the context around this, how far they have an, a hospital from there, and now we're making much better decisions with that. Or for example, disaster response. Here you can see the hurricane before and after uh, on a satellite image, and you can play around with it, and we can see where the specific resources are. Uh, we, you can see a picture of where, the, of where the damage was done, and you can see how the resources are actually being spent now. In, uh, and all of our infrastructure is open, is open source. We created that way, it's on GitHub. So we, not only the code, but also the methodology, also all our failures and our successes. So we're working with cities and states so they can replicate it. So now we have a network of around eight different cities and states where they are all sharing the same infrastructure, the same data, so we can better analyze the information on a federal level, state level, and city level. So city level, things like uh, rob robbery or car theft to uh, federal level things like uh, education spending or health spending. We also created this uh, project where we, we were thinking, uh, how can we get more innovators into the government, more entrepreneurs, people that really want, that, that they prefer going to the Silicon Valley, but how can they, we convince them to come to the, federal, to the Mexican federal government? So we created this project called Agentes de Innovación or Innovation Agents. The logic was, let's, let's put together an innovator inside the government and an innovator outside the government and work together in the, in the same specific topic through an open innovation methodology where they first uh, brainstorm ideas and then prototype the, the, the ideas and then prove, prove them. Um, the logic behind this methodology is that if you understand the project at the very beginning and understand what it's failing, uh, you validate the problem, then it's learning and you can iterate. But if you understand it and you test it very late, then it's a failure and it's very expensive. Uh, so we created these five different teams uh, where they, we asked them to, to prototype. They, they, were, they, were, they, were, uh, they were creating different prototypes with this IL methodology. And then went to the streets. For example, the, the guys that were solving the health issue, they were invited to go to the public health clinic, wait in line for around six hours to get attended, then tell them to, that the medication is not there, to come back next, next day, and so on. So they can actually suffer and experience what citizens experience. I, was, I, I, was, I, I accompanied the people that were working in the security project, which is this, and I, this guy was asking um, a, a, a person that sells tacos in my neighborhood in Mexico. Uh, hey, do you feel safe? And he said, yeah, I feel super safe. I know you do. And, and, and he said, no, uh, but what do you feel about around the city? How do you feel the people? And he said, you know, actually this morning, there's a, that's a gunshot. And I, I've never seen that before. And that, that was my neighborhood. And I feel super safe in, in my neighborhood. So if you start asking people, you can empathize with people. And you can better understand also the problems that, uh, that other people are, are facing and not just behind the desk where we are. So, as I told you, we, we, we worked five different projects. All of them are launching at this moment. We're, we're actually fini finishing the project. Uh, I still talk about we, although I'm not involved anymore, but as an advisor. Um, <clears throat> another project that we launched is, another problem that we try to solve is, how can we make that not only the big companies all, all, all are the ones that procure, that go into the government procurement or win uh, government contracts. So we try to understand where are the entrepreneurs and how can they uh, also go through the traditional procurement process and win. So we asked nine, uh, 10 different uh, agencies of the Mexican government, uh, a project that they were about to, to go into, into the procurement process, to discard that and not, do not tell us what they want, but tell us what they need. So we put our, the needs out there, and we asked entrepreneurs to uh, propose solutions. The, first, the best five solutions per challenge were funded with seed capital so they can create a prototype, and the best prototype uh, would be uh, the one that the government hired. Uh, so this way, we, are, we already have a community of around 1,000 different entrepreneurs. We did that only in four months. And we, are, we, are, we democratized uh, around $4 million in, this, in these kind of projects. Uh, 
We actually uh, try to take, uh, to take this a, a step further with uh, New America and other institutions where we try to create this uh, challenge between Mexico and the US where, we, uh, where they can do what they can do about with the maker community, the Internet of Things, and around energy. And the challenge actually just finished a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I, 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 I come from a country where unjustifiable things uh, are, uh, inexcusable things are sometimes justified. Uh, this, this, uh, and, um, and this is a picture just a month ago of, a, of, a, of a, the, the head of an agency in Mexico uh, taking a, a public helicopter going to the airport because he wanted to go on vacation uh, to bail with his family. Uh, the ne a neighbor took the, took the picture in, in, in Facebook and put it, I'm sick about how this is such a corrupt government, how the, the, the public uh, services are being spent this way. And it became viral. Everybody was there. And then this guy, this guy said, hey, but I, I, it, it's my knee. I cannot move because I have an, a, an emergency, so I go into the US to, to operate. And then another, another, another uh, Twitter user said, hey, you run, you run with me a marathon on Saturday, so you don't have a knee, <laughs> you don't have a knee problem. And, uh, and, then he said, and then his wife said, hey, but we didn't go to the US. So a reporter said, I, I called the, the US Immigration Department, and they said, no, we, they are in the US. So he was completely uh, uh, narrow, so he, he, he quit. Uh, but the truth is, this, this is a unique case. We, we still have a, long, a, long, a, long, a very long way to come uh, through. But citizens, we are understanding that democracy at least in Mexico, it's not only voting every three or six years. It, it's, it's, we're, we, we want our, our, our seat on the table. We want to participate. We want to be uh, not only passive citizens. And we want our governments to understand that we're thinking in, in hierarchies. In, in, we're thinking in networks, not in hierarchies anymore. And we want our governments to be an oath within the network. Thank you very much. <laughs>